experiment for organic one, uh, preparation of T-butyl uh, chloride. Um, preparation of T-butyl chloride using uh, T-butyl alcohol or 2-methyl 2-propanol, um, it's going to be um, based, this reaction is the SN1 reaction, means that uh, unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. It has a carbocation intermediate. For carbocation intermediate, the more stable carbocation, the faster the reaction. Uh, because this alcohol is going to give us tertiary carbocation, um, so it's going to be a fast reaction. The reaction is a fast reaction, and you will see that it's going to happen very quickly. And uh, we can, if we are using primary alcohol or secondary alcohol, it would take a longer time. But this is just to, to show you that we are performing this experiment and we are going to uh, test with silver nitrate, the, the product after isolation, uh, to prove that alkyl halide has, uh, has the form. So uh, for this experiment, we are using HCl, um, hydrochloric acid, uh, for two purposes. First of all, uh, it's going to provide us the nucleophile, which is the Cl minus. The Cl minus is the nucleophile in this reaction. Um, second, it's going to protonate the OH. When it does protonate the OH, uh, it's going to change the OH to better leaving group, which is H2O. We do need a good leaving group in this reaction. I had the HCl measured, the 15 milliliter of HCl, placed in the ice bath for the last 10, 15 minutes, just took it out, going to transfer into a separatory funnel um, carefully, when you are working in the lab, you want to use maybe a funnel uh, or carefully make sure that there is no acid spilling outside of the um, separatory uh, funnel. Now, after you transfer the acid, then carefully, and this is a cold acid, and uh, when you read the experiment, it does tell you why it has to be cold because we do not want to promote any elimination product here. So we are keeping the, the reaction condition very cold. I added five milliliters based on the procedure of the T-butyl uh, alcohol. Uh, close the stopper and make sure to, uh, to mix it well and wet. There is no heat here involved in the reaction. But we do have to vigorously shake this separatory funnel to make sure that reaction is taking place here. So we do this a few times. And vent. Just shake and vent. When you are shaking, especially with this such a strong acid of uh, concentrated hydrochloric in there, you want to make sure to put pressure with the palm of your hand to the glass stopper and vent it periodically because if there is high pressure inside, it can cause a disaster. We don't want acid vapor of the acid or a splash of the acid close to your face or your body anywhere. We're going to place on the iron ring to rest and the layers should um, form and start the separation. Layers are, um, are separated, but I'm just giving more time to make it more visible. See that there is like a ring up here, a clear ring. That's the organic layer. And the cloudy layer is the aqueous layer. Separating the lower layer collecting in a, in a beaker. And the next step, 
We are going to wash this with, uh, with sodium bicarbonate. The reason we are washing with sodium bicarbonate is because um, if there's any leftover of the acid, it would be removed. So I'm just going to measure 10 milliliter of sodium bicarbonate carefully add to the, to the separatory funnel. It does produce carbon dioxide gas, so I'm adding slowly. because it's an acid-base reaction. And remove the top to make sure there's no pressure buildup. And separate the lower layer. Okay. We will follow by washing with 10 milliliters of cold water. And this is part of the procedure. Just measure 10 milliliters of water. Just washing, that's why I'm not shaking, venting. This is just washing of the, um, of the sample with water to remove whatever water soluble impurities is left, especially I just add the sodium, uh, sodium bicarbonate. So I see the two layers. We're going to separate the aqueous layer and we are collecting all of the aqueous layer in the same beaker, which is called the waste container. We don't need the aqueous layer. We only need the organic top layer. There's some moisture still left. Going to transfer that to a clean, dry, Erlenmeyer flask. For the same reason that I have always said, you don't want to drain the organic layer from bottom because you have drops of liquid of aqueous solution. You do not want to mix that. The sample has uh, some trace amount of water and it looks cloudy. If you could see it, it looks cloudy. We are going to um, remove the moisture by adding anhydrous agent. I like the, uh, the calcium chloride and I'm going to bring the calcium chloride uh, to add uh, because it comes in pellets or mesh and it's very easy to, to separate them. Um, Okay, we're going to add calcium, anhydrous calcium uh, chloride. And these are very easy to, to separate them compared to sodium sulfate and magnesium sulfate uh, because it's, it comes in the pellets or it's mesh. I close it with uh, paraffin. Uh, wait for three to five minutes. For the uh, anhydrous agent to work and remove the, the moisture. I know I have enough of the drying agent because the calcium chloride is moving, moving around. Next step would be to measure the mass of the product. Um, to measure the mass of product, I have to separate from drying agent. So I would take another clean, dry um, Erlenmeyer flask, measure the empty container, and then um, transfer after the moisture has been absorbed. Way to tear the balance, measure the mass of the empty Erlenmeyer flask. Also take a picture so I could include that in the video. 
so you could see and read better. Then transfer the liquid only the liquid portion without getting any solid in. And measure the mass again. We to take a picture. So I would include the picture. You read it from the picture. Okay. We have the product, which you can calculate the percent yield based on the mass. We have to prove that this product is a T butyl. Um, chloride. So we will test it with silver nitrate. If a white precipitate forms, then we know that um, this compound is T butyl um, chloride. Because it's a tertiary um, alkyl halide, is going to um, form very fast. So as soon as you add the, the silver nitrate, you should see the white uh, precipitate. The silver nitrate test, we take the um, sample, add a few drops of the sample into a um, test tube. Just um, anywhere between two to five drops, would, it would work. And add 5% silver nitrate solution. Formation of the white precipitate, um, it indicates that we have the alkyl halide um, as, the, as a product. This is just one last test for this chemical also, is, which is a physical test, and that is the refractive index. For the refractive index, we um, are using digital refractometer. I um, clean usually with the ethanol. We don't use acetone for this. Um, to calibrate, we add um, we add distilled water, and when we add the distilled water, it would calibrate. Just wait for it to calibrate. You have to have like direct light on it. Okay, it says the calibration point or set point calibration successful. Okay. It is successful. Now I'm adding the sample. So it is ready to add the sample. Our product, the alkyl halide. which is the T-butyl chloride, and press read. This uh, is very easy to operate this machine because it has only cal and then read. For calibration, we are using the distilled one. Let's take a picture. To include that in the video, so you could read off the machine. Very good. Uh, and that is the last piece of information we need um, as a data uh, for uh, writing your lab report. Thank you.